Psalm 19 is an incredibly interesting psalm. It really traces the, the life of the Christian from before they were a Christian to when they were a Christian to the fight that goes on inside of the Christian. And so it starts by saying, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they display knowledge. What this is talking about is how we all, every person, whether they are a Christian, whether they are an atheist, whether they are Hindu, whether they are Muslim, uh, they all have a natural knowledge of God. And basically what that means is this. You can look around at the things around you. You can look at the landscape in front of you. You can see great mountains, vast seas. You can see these wonderful marvels of nature. And you can see those things and say, there has to be somebody who created that. There is such beauty. There is such power. There is such magnificence to these things that you learn a few things about God from actually looking at these things. That you can learn appreciation for God as you look at a mountain or an ocean or, or, or vast prairies or, or the beautiful trees or, or the animals that are in those things or just the way the world works. How the sun rises and it sets. How there's a cycle of precipitation. How there's things like photosynthesis. You can look at all of those things and have an appreciation for a God who is incredibly organized, who, who has an appreciation for beauty who has put all of this together in the world. You can learn those things about God. But there's things that you can't learn about God from nature. And one of those things is Jesus. Nature can't tell you about Jesus. Nature can show you a lot of things, but, but it can't show you Jesus. That is something that you can only find in his word. And so the middle of that of this psalm talks about how the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making the wise simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. And so it's talking about the word of the Lord. It's talking about how Jesus is revealed to us in scripture that that our faith is not complete by just observing nature and seeing nature. But our faith is complete when we know what he has promised us in his word. This really puts the, the meat on the bones, you might say. Um, and then it goes on. Now, now that you have the, the bones, now that you have the meat on the bones, what does that mean for the, the life of the Christian? Who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden faults. The Lord is perfect and requires perfection. Yet I still have hidden faults. I still have sins that I struggle with in, the, in my life. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless and innocent of great transgression. So, so the war going on inside of the Christian it is to, to not do these uh, bad things, these sinful things but to live a God-pleasing life and to obey His statutes and His commands that, that are perfect. And then he ends with this, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In the end, we, we fall on our rock and our redeemer, Jesus, who redeemed us from, from death, from sin, and from the power of the devil, and who has given to us heaven, eternal life. 